what we're going to look at now is pre-writing. Pre-writing refers to a bunch of strategies that you can use uh, in order to get your writing started. Uh, in some more casual types of writing that you may do, you may not do a lot of pre-writing, but for something more formal, like an essay or a research paper, it really helps to think ahead before you do the actual writing itself uh, to uh, get the ideas going. Uh, it can sometimes be challenging when you're sitting there and you're faced with a blank page or a blank computer screen and you just plain don't know where to begin. Um, that's something where pre-writing can help you get out of that rut and get the ideas flowing. Um, so there are a bunch of different pre-writing techniques. I'm going to present quite a few of them. And some pre-writing techniques are going to be better for you than others. Uh, different people have different strengths. Uh, and so the thing to do with the pre-writing is try all the different techniques and then uh, find the ones that really, really work well for you uh, that you can use in the future for the rest of your academic career. So one pre-writing technique that we have is called brainstorming. It's also known as listing. That's the technique where um, you can either do it as a group, um, where in a group you would have one person be a secretary and just write down a list of all the ideas that people come up with, or uh, you may do it individually with a blank piece of paper and again, just write down all the ideas that come to you. The key to making brainstorming work is that you don't censor yourself. Uh, this technique and quite a few others that I'm going to be presenting, uh, the best comparison I can say is that it's like uh, taking your brain to the top of a hill and letting off the parking brake and just seeing where it rolls um, and seeing what you end up with. So when you're brainstorming, there is no such thing as a bad idea. Um, an idea comes up, you're not allowed to say, oh, that's a dumb idea and leave it behind. Every idea that comes up, whether you're doing it individually or whether it's a group, every single idea that everybody says gets written down. So um, what happens with brainstorming? Later on, you can figure out what is or is not a good idea. But don't censor yourself at this point because once you start censoring yourself, once every idea has to be perfect from the get-go, you're going to have writer's block. So write down every single idea, no matter how dumb it seems. Uh, it turns out later on it may actually be something that does have merit, uh, but the big thing is if, you, if it has to be perfect, um, you get stuck. Um, another similar technique is um, clustering, also known as mapping. This is very much like brainstorming. Once again, it's this uh, technique where uh, you don't censor yourself. Every idea comes up, uh, gets written down. This is one that's really good if you're a visually oriented person uh, because you start by writing your topic in the middle of the page, draw a circle around it, and then draw lines um, and write other ideas down, draw circles, connect the lines, so that they relate to each other, and so on and so forth. For example, if I were to be writing about pickup trucks, I might start with that idea in the center of my page, and then what I'll want to do is come up with ideas related to pickup trucks. So I'll have the size big or small, uh, engine type, uh, is it gas? or diesel, uh, costs, uh, which of course ties into your gas, uh, ties into your uh, maintenance. Uh, there are things you do with the pickup trucks. Um, hauling, uh, 
cargo, oh, maybe boats. I happen to like hauling boats myself. So what you end up with then is a picture of how the ideas connect to each other. And there are a couple of useful things about this particular thing. I suppose I had a round circle there. All right. Um, one of the things that happens with clustering is um, at the end, you're going to end up with something that gives you a clue uh, when you're organizing your essay. What ideas are connected to what other ideas? And that tells you, OK, these things are closely related. I can put them together in the same paragraph. Or these things are related to these other things, so I can cover you know, that one in the next paragraph from this one. Another thing that clustering will do for you, if you are having trouble narrowing down your topic, if you've got a really broad topic, for example, pickup trucks, if I were to try write an essay with everything that has to do with pickup trucks, that would not be an essay. It would be an encyclopedia. So if you want to narrow your focus down to something you can fit in an essay, clustering can help. Because what will often happen when you're clustering, uh, you'll see one branch or another that starts looking more interesting, a more specific direction. And once you've got that, uh, that may give you an idea of where you want to focus your essay as a whole uh, if you see a more uh, specialized branch. And for example, uh, in terms of very specialized branches of pickup trucks, uh, I am actually an authority on the internet on launching a deep keel sailboat using a boat ramp. Uh, so yes, over here with boats, that's an even more specialized um, uh, technique. Uh, but anyhow, so with pickup trucks, you can narrow down the topic. But as I said, clustering, that's a really good one if you do have just sort of a visual way of regarding the world, because it can help you visualize where your ideas are going. Another technique is free writing. Free writing is where you start with a blank piece of paper or a blank computer screen, and you just simply start writing and you do not stop writing. So free writing, you just write. You keep on writing. You write every single idea that comes into your head, even if it goes off topic. That's fine with free writing. In free writing, uh, as I mentioned, you don't stop. And so what that means is you get stuck. Keep writing the same word over and over again until you are unstuck. Uh, also, on free writing, you don't worry about spelling or grammar or any of that stuff. If it's coming out with perfect grammar and spelling, it's not free writing, because that means you're thinking too much. So um, when you're free writing, uh, don't worry about the grammar. Don't worry about the spelling. Uh, if your first language is something other than English, don't waste time trying to think of a word in English. Uh, just use the word in whatever language you've got. Uh, dirty words are also OK. They aren't OK in the final essay, but they're sure OK in free writing. Um, also, if you're using the computer for free writing, uh, if you have the word processor set to put the little squiggly underlines where the computer thinks there's a mistake, there should be lots of squiggly underlines. If you don't have any squiggly underlines, you're thinking too much. Uh, so uh, if you've got uh, so, and free writing is supposed to be messy, too. You don't go back and fix and correct things. You don't go back and erase or rewrite. On the computer, that means hands off the backspace key, hands off the mouse. If you are tempted to go and back and correct things on the computer, turn the monitor off. Or if you've got a laptop where you can't turn the monitor off, cover up the screen so that you can't even see what you're doing. It is absolutely wonderfully liberating to be able to write when you can't even see what you're doing. That really does help the ideas flow. So that's free writing. Now, related to free writing is something called looping. Looping is one of these things, if you are having trouble getting uh, your ideas narrowed down, once again, if you're starting with pickup trucks and you're trying to narrow the focus. And the way looping works is you start by free writing for maybe seven minutes or so. Set that free writing aside for a while, at least 20 minutes, preferably overnight. 
and then come back to that free writing later, once it's cooled off, and read through what you wrote. And look for some interesting idea in there. And once you've found that interesting idea, uh, underline it. If you're on the computer, highlight it and copy it. Uh, skip down a couple of lines below the free writing you did before. And then start free writing again using that idea as your launching point. So you would copy that idea down and then launch another round of pre free writing using that idea to help narrow your focus. And you might even loop several times if, if that's a way that it's going to help you uh, to, to get things narrowed down and to get things working.